Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Box and Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet card on the PCI Express bus from Nick Giga. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so on today's video, we'll be taking a look at a enhanced network card, we should call it, I suppose. Most PCs these days come with either a 10100 or possibly even a gigabit ethernet card, but for some people that just isn't quite enough. And if you are transferring lots of files, such as video files, that kind of thing, or just got incredibly high bandwidth requirements, then you may find yourself needing a 2.5 gigabit ethernet adapter. So this at the moment is one of the cheapest on the market here in the UK and possibly around the world. Links will be in the video description. This is from Nick Giga and is a 2.5 gigabit ethernet card. It is using the Realtek RTL8125B chipset, which actually, weirdly at the moment, seems to be doing considerably better than its Intel counterparts. The Intel chipsets do tend to be a little bit on the buggy side, whereas the RTL8125B actually seems to work very well and doesn't require any drivers at all when you're using it with Windows 10 or Windows 11. Of course, as with most things Realtek, there are drivers available for other operating systems. Again, I'll put links for those in the video description. So let's talk about, first of all, some of the good points of this. We'll go through doing unboxing. We'll then show you how to install one of these cards. And we'll talk about possibly some of the downsides and some of the cost implications of going on the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet bandwagon. So one of the first things to be considering is basically compatibility. Now this card luckily has pretty much 99.9% .9 compatibility with pretty much every PC on the market these days due to the fact that it is PCI Express times one slot and also comes with a full size and a half height adapter means it will fit in pretty much any PC. Obviously your mileage may vary, but this should cover pretty much most models. Also again, like I said, it doesn't require any drivers, so that is gonna be excellent for Windows 10 and Windows 11 users. It also comes with lifetime customer support, which uh, probably won't be needed, but if it is any problems, then it will be able to help you out hopefully. And also it comes with a one year warranty as standard. And possibly one of the main benefits of this over the 10 gigabit network cards, that sort of thing, is the fact that you can actually use this with your existing Cat5 network cabling, which actually means you don't have to go spending a lot of money on either fiber or copper wiring. Potentially as well, you may find that with a 2.5 gigabit card, theoretically you can transfer somewhere in the region of about 310 megabytes per second, although there is gonna be some network overhead on that, so realistically you should probably be getting somewhere between the 250 and 280 megabytes per second transfers with compatible networks. So that's all the technical stuff out of the way. Let's take a look and see what we actually get inside the box. And actually it's quite a nice little package in here. Obviously recyclable as hell. It was interesting to see actually on the back of the card, although this is made predominantly in China, it is actually distributed here in the UK from a company in Pontypris. So border that to you. Looking inside the box, first of all, there is a installation guide, which uh, yeah, is pretty much straightforward and goes through all of the process in uh, nice colored detail. And also there's links in there for downloading drivers should you need them. The network card itself is actually very, very well nice packaged. I like this a lot. It's really good. You can see exactly what you're getting. So you've got the actual network card itself here at the bottom. There is a half height network card adapter. So that can just be attached to screws and you can remove the existing one, the full height one you can replace it with that. So if you've got a small form factor PC or one of the pre-builts from kind of Dell, HP, that sort of thing, then you can transfer this over and you shouldn't have any issues at all. Also included is a couple of spare screws and conveniently as well, just so you can actually get the job done in one package, there's a little tiny screwdriver included. So looking at the card itself, you can see it's actually very nicely stealthily done, all blacked out in a really nice matte black finish. Uh, I did actually have to sharpie out the edges just to please James Miscellaneous. He does get rather upset about those kinds of things. There is a slight white border to the PCB, so I've just colored that in with a sharpie. Looking at the card, there is a heat sink over the actual chipset itself, and you can take the two screws off of there. You can see they've used a relatively decent thermal compound there to keep the chipset cool. And actually in use today when I've been using it, the chipset barely gets warm to the touch, so I don't think it's really necessary, but it's nice to have anyway. There's also some indication LEDs. So we've got two sets of LEDs on the card itself there, which are visible from the back plane and the back plane as well. Also actually really nicely done, surprisingly for what this costs. Now this in the moment in the UK, you're gonna be looking at paying somewhere in the region of about 20 to 25 pounds. Now, if you take that into consideration, if you were to buy a motherboard, a brand new motherboard with 2.5 gigabit ethernet, the chances are you're gonna be looking at somewhere pretty high up the product stack. So potentially this could save you replacing your motherboard. Another thing to bear in mind is actually, if you wanna get the real best out of this, 
Well, there's two ways of doing it. One of which is to buy two of these and just use a ethernet cable in crossover mode. Although that does require a, uh, a small amount of network skill to actually get that set up reliably. Alternatively, you would need to buy either a five or eight port 2.5 gigabit ethernet switch of which those aren't the cheapest at the moment. Certainly in comparison with their one gigabit brethren, they are quite expensive. When you look at a eight port one gigabit switch, you're looking at somewhere between the 15 to 20 pounds mark. Whereas when you're looking at 2.5 gigabit ethernet, at the moment they have dropped a little bit, but still we're looking at somewhere in the regions about 17 pounds per port. So certainly it can get expensive. Obviously a five port version is gonna cost you somewhere in the region of about 80 to 85 pounds. Whereas an eight port version, you can get on special offer at the moment for somewhere around the 140 pounds mark, but certainly still is quite an investment. Anyway, that's enough waffle. Let's get this thing installed and see what it's like. Okay, so we're going to install our uh, new network card inside the PC. So first thing to do is to actually shut the PC down. So click on start or however you normally shut down your PC. Let it shut down in its entirety. And there we go, that telltale click means that the PC is turned off. At this point, it's probably a good idea as well to turn off your power supply switch. Now on this particular PC, the power supply is here, so let's turn it off just to be on the safe side. So now we know the power is completely off. So we're gonna choose a PCI Express port, which uh, we're actually gonna use this bottom one down here, which is the lowest one away from our graphics card. You could, if you want to, use the one up here but you may find that blocks the fans on some GPUs. So yeah, if you're using a micro ATX board, you might find this a little bit uh, challenging. You can, if you want to install it in the, the larger size slot, if you want to, it only needs PCI Express times one, like we said before. So just those uh, little bits there. So you can choose which slot, but it will go in any one of those three. So let's take off the PCI Express blanking plate for that particular slot. So just look across and see which one needs to come out. So that is gonna be this one here. So we'll undo that screw and remove our blanking plate. Put that somewhere safe, just in case you need it. Next thing, we're gonna get the card and just gonna line up with the PCI Express slot and the back plate and just gently push it in and it'll just click into place. And then you can replace the screw that you've just taken out now for us in this particular instance, the important thing is gonna to be to remove our ethernet cable from the onboard motherboard port and plug it into the port on the bottom. Now that's done, we can uh, turn on the power supply and turn on the PC again. And as you can see, there is already some network activity lights at the bottom there, you can just about see. Although if you turn the PC round, you can see on the back, there is our network activity light flashing away. And now in our bottom corner here, where we've got our network activity, if we right click on that, go into network and settings. We should be able to see now that it is on a 2.5 gigabit ethernet. There we go. So description, Realtek gaming 2.5 gigabit ethernet controller. Excellent stuff. So there we go, pretty easy to install and to configure, basically completely driverless on our Windows 11 machine there in the background. It worked essentially flawlessly. The only thing that is missing at the moment for us here at Mike's Unboxing is a 2.5 gigabit ethernet switch, which I'm still in the process of working out which is gonna be the best one for me. But don't worry, those will be coming up for reviews in coming videos. So if you wanna see how those go, don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the channel icon to stay notified of future video releases. For those of you that are still with us and are wondering, actually, does it make any difference to install one of these cards at the moment in comparison with a standard gigabit ethernet port if you're using a standard gigabit ethernet switch? Uh, the answer realistically is no, it makes no difference whatsoever. The transfer speeds are still gonna be limited by your gigabit switch. You're not gonna get anything better. Potentially, you might get a little bit more reliability being that these cards are slightly more expensive and therefore generally of a slightly better quality than what you might find built into your motherboard. But realistically, if you are on a gigabit ethernet, then there isn't really any point at the moment, unless again, you're gonna go with a crossover cable and link two PCs directly. That certainly will make things considerably better. But realistically, you are gonna to have to invest in the ecosystem. So probably you're gonna be looking at at least somewhere in the region of about 120, 130 pounds to get yourself set up initially. And that isn't gonna be an easy pill to swallow for some people. Hopefully as time goes on, prices will go down. This is more of a, what I would consider a somewhat slightly niche product at the moment. But certainly as with gigabit ethernet, that has become mainstream and hopefully in the very near future, 
The same can be said for 2.5 gigabit ethernet. And certainly with faster internet speeds coming out on an almost daily basis, it might be coming sooner than you think. So anyway, let me know what you think about 2.5 gigabit ethernet. Is it something that you're interested in? Is it something that you're potentially planning in the back of your mind and looking forward to? Or is it something which is completely out of the way and you're not interested at all? Please do let me know in the comments section. I'll be very glad to hear from you. I should also say thank you very much to Ugly Bob for sending this over for review purposes. Although unfortunately now I do have to spend some money on a 2.5 gigabit ethernet switch. So yeah, thanks for that, Bob. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for now. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.